welcome to Tech Webcast, Australia's leading technology show. Download our iPhone app, www.techwebcast.info. Welcome to episode 146 of the Tech Webcast podcast, recorded on Saturday, the 6th of August, 2011. Tech Webcast is recorded live every Saturday and rebroadcast on Aussie Tech Heads on Thursday nights at 7. Today's hosts are Brad, Jason and Aaron. Our special guest is Cam from HangoutParty.com. How are you doing, Brad? Hey, Jason. How are you, mate? Yeah, not too bad. How's your week been? Good, mate. Yourself? Your good. Week's been good. Any news? Uh, yeah, I'm getting a Mac Mini from Chatterbox Live. Sweet. Yeah. You need to get more Apple stuff, I think. Yeah, that, that's what he said. Everybody should get more Apple stuff, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. Um, yeah, so, yeah, he's going to actually send me a Mac Mini. It's not a new one. It's actually a 2009 model, but, hey, it's still a Mac Mini. Not, and not a G4 or anything? No, 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 no. Phew, that's lucky. <laughs> no, it's, it's a 2009 one, and, yeah, he said that works fine. And They um, should be awesome. There's so much you can do with them. Oh, Definitely. Definitely you want a little server, you can plug them in for a media center, yep. throw out that boxy box you got, don't need that uh, anymore. No, no, we'll be trying to boxy box out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never do that. You can run the boxy box software on there though, couldn't you? Uh, I think you could, yeah. I think so. Yeah, but you yeah. won't need to because you've no, already got one. won't so. need to, no, no. Oh, you got what? you got one for the bedroom, one for the lounge room. Yeah, now. I could yeah. probably put it in yeah. my room here. Room. Yeah. yeah, that could be you the same. One for the loo, one for the kitchen. Yeah, one for the... Uh, yeah, and the land room and stuff. Yeah, they need a boxy app. Yeah, they do. That would be do. awesome. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good, mate. That'd be good. Now you got um, just another question I want to ask you before we go. Um, the Apple TV got an update too, didn't it? Yeah, I'm not sure what they had in there. I'll look at it while we're having a chat, and we can discuss that as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, because I just seen a, a video of um, from the guy Mark. His name is from uh, Insanely Mac. Yeah. Uh, show he did a video uh, on it and. Um, I think they're adding cloudy stuff to it. Yeah, they are, and they are also um, you can watch rent TV shows now. I think or buy TV shows. Yeah, if you bought any TV shows previously, you can now download them through the cloud at any time. Okay, cool. All right. Okay. Um, we got also, Aaron. We also got Aaron. Hey, Aaron. Hey, boys. What's going on? Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Uh, Tech webcast. Um, good to have you back on again. Yeah, good to have you back yeah. on, mate. How's the dog anyway, mate? Oh yeah, the dog's fine. Healing well. Good. Yeah. Good. Uh, and uh, we've got Cam from HangoutParties.com. How's it going, guys? I'm going well. Yeah, welcome to the show, man. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So what is HangoutParties.com? Uh, All to do with Google Plus, isn't it? Sort of. Uh, can you repeat that? Uh, the website. Is it, it's all to do with, with Hangout Parties. Is that correct? Google Plus. Google yes. Plus. Yep. Cool. And how did it all get started? Okay, when uh, Google Plus first came out, uh, we were really excited about uh, the new social network, so we began using it all the time. And we found that the best, the most exciting part of Google Plus for a large number of people was the Hangout feature, which is the uh, 10-person video chat. Have you guys uh, been doing that? We have, mate. Indeed, we love it. Yeah, it's great. Well, we started uh, having Hangouts every day, every night, and we were uh, the rooms only allowing 10 people into them, uh, with kind of a limitation that uh, I thought we could uh, fix. So I, we designed a website that, that the purpose was to allow for more than 10 people to be able to participate in a Hangout on Google+. Plus. So what we created was uh, called HangoutParty.com, and what that does is it restreams the video to as many other people as want to be a part of the Hangout. Okay, cool. Um, and what sort of guests have you? You've also had guests on singers and stuff, haven't you, on there? Yeah, so what we began doing is so we began, uh, a lot of response came back and everyone wanted to promote their hangouts on the website. So we started having concerts. We have a uh, Bible study on there. We have wow. uh, tattoo artists doing their tattoos. We have all different events. And uh, we, we set up a schedule so that you could schedule your events and you could uh, do your hangouts on the website yourself. Oh, cool. Sounds, Sounds a bit like a uh, Justin TV or you stream for Google Plus Hangouts. Yeah, it's a similar thing, but with the with the Google Plus Hangouts aspect of it, uh, there's ten people that are actually what we call the front row, and they're able to speak 
and interact. And then the people outside, it's a place for them to listen, watch, and chat with the people in the room and wait for their turn for someone to get in. And what uh, we began doing is having like a rotation where people will spend some time in that front row of the 10 seats and then they'll step out and allow the other people to come in. Oh, cool. So it's like a concert sort of thing. Yes. Cool. All right. Any questions from Aaron or Jason? Yeah, what do you find uh, your most popular uh, shows and how long has it been going for? Well, um, we've been uh, working with Daria Musk, who's a uh, who's a lovely, young, talented artist. She uh, sings and plays guitar, and she's been doing her concerts on HangoutParty.com. We actually have a concert coming up on, well, I don't know if I could release the date yet, but it's going to be uh, August 20th, uh, so I think that's the first time people heard the date. Cool. And... Uh, Last uh, we had a concert last Friday for Daria, and there was seven thousand two hundred people who came and watched wow. the concert. That's so crazy! It's a lot of a lot of response. Good. Yeah. Wow. It sounds like a really good platform for uh, helping new artists and bands. Well, that's what it is. You know, we're uh, we're we're still a small a smaller company, and and we're uh, giving everybody the opportunity to broadcast to as many people as possible. But what we help you do is we we we. We do the streaming for you. We do the hosting for you. We do, even do the promotion for you. So you don't have to worry about any of that. All you have to worry about is you know, your talent, whatever you have that you want the world to see, and you come on to Google Plus Hangout, and we'll take care of all the rest. Well, we might even get our show on there one day, do an episode. Yeah, do a live one. Yeah, yeah. that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, all right. Um, How do want... people get in contact with you to be on a uh, hangout party? Do they, is there an email on the website or uh, some contact form? Yeah, there's an email on the website. Uh, the email is events at hangoutparty.com. And if you email that, we actually have like three or four people now checking all the emails coming in because we have more than, a, more than we can handle now. And uh, just ask for, a schedule, uh, ask for a time to be scheduled. And uh, we're pretty open about allowing anyone on. It's not a heavy audition process uh, because we believe that anyone's talent is, is worthwhile to someone. Mm. So if you have something that you want to promote or produce, uh, we can find a time and place, and we'll get you on there. Cool. Sounds fun. Um, have, you had, have you had much feedback about it? Like any celebrities all want to come on there? Or any like Leo Laporte? Actually, we do. We do have a lot of, we do have a lot of people uh, interested in coming on. We do have people coming to us, uh, you know, name-dropping, saying they can get these uh, various people on. So right. uh, we'll, see, we'll see what type. But there should be some... Pretty uh, exciting things coming up. Cool. Just a little while. Some celebrities that are all that you're all world because they, when the uh, a lot of celebrities are still not quite. Uh, they don't know what to do with Google Plus. Yeah. Uh, there are some on there, but not a lot of people have not moved over to this social platform. So when they're coming over, they don't know why they want to be here and what they could do. So they're being directed towards HangoutParty.com because it was the site out there that was doing uh, doing this first, and uh, they're really excited. And when they finally realize what it is that Hangouts offer them and Hangout Party offers them, there's always a great feedback for, from it, and they want to be a part of it. All right, cool, cool stuff, Cam. Um, Are you just uh, working on word of mouth uh, to spread the name of the site and what it's about at the moment, or are you doing a lot of self-promotion as well? Um, there's, there's a lot of different ways. We have uh, people working on it, but uh, right now it's word of mouth. Since it's such a new technology, people are really excited about it, and people that otherwise might not advertise uh, a site uh, we found have really been telling their friends and you know up in their twitters we had a we had a Pete Wentz from Follow Up Boy on the other day and as soon as he got on and, and saw what it was about he he sent a twitter feed out to his 2.3 million followers and well, told them to geez. all visit the site and stuff so right now it's a lot of it's a lot of like grassroots promotion going on by people just because they're genuinely interested in in the site and they want to show it to as many need, people as they can. You need to get uh, M- Eminem on there, mate. Yeah, well, we'd love to. If you have connections, let us know. Well, I don't. And the Beastie Boys, Brad. Oh, yeah, and them too, yeah. You like them too? Yeah, I love them, yeah. That's a great band, them. Yeah, music's good. Um, and, yeah, what about you, Aaron? What are, you, what are your thoughts on this, mate? I think this is just brilliant. What a brilliant idea. Um, um, what my biggest question is like, um, did you find it? Um, did you find it difficult to to put the site together, like using uh, the live stream tools? Um, the technically the site was not too difficult for uh, us to put together, but what we what we've been finding is we have numerous people trying to uh, do similar things with their products, 
and they're having a d- very difficult time. So they've been sending uh, a lot of requests towards us, asking us how how we're pulling this off. And up to this point, we've been very helpful with everyone else, and uh, you know, helping them out with their audio problems and their video problems. Uh, so, so it, it, it was simple for for me, but uh, it does seem to be a little bit difficult for other people. <laughs> well, I get a bit yeah, of work right. through um, consulting uh, how to set up this kind of site in the future for others. Yeah. And what was that? <laughs> you might get a bit of yeah, work we, uh, consulting. Yeah, um, we. I, I probably, I'd say, the interest is so strong in, in this type of project that I'd say about three different three different groups come to me a day and ask me, why they're having problems and can I help and I can I help them with it? Cool. Well, that sounds like yeah, a good well, provide. Yeah, sounds great. Sounds great. Now, do you reckon you'll ever put out an iPhone app for this or an iPad app? Actually, that is another aspect of this. We do have a mobile feed available. If you go to hangoutparty.com on your iPad or your Android, yep. you can watch and listen to the streams on the actual Hangouts, the true Google Plus Hangouts. You cannot witness the Hangouts on a uh, uh, mobile app. So we actually expand expand Google Hangouts beyond what Google is doing themselves currently right now. Cool, cool. So, so give that link out one more time for the mobile users. The mobile users, if they use their browser and they go yep. to hangoutparty.com, it's not an app, but if, if, they, if they have a, uh, a, a flash-enabled browser, yep. um, they are able to watch and listen and chat with the streams. Okay, cool. All right, sounds good, mate. And where can they find you on the internet and that sort of thing? And do you, do you make money out of this, or is, it, or is it all free and that sort of stuff? Um, it's currently all free. Uh, there's some revenue coming in, but it's still not uh, as much as the expenses. But uh, that's not uh, what we're doing right now. We're doing it for the love of the technology and yep. the fun of the people we've been meeting. And we're just trying to include as many people as possible. So we're trying to keep it as – we're going to keep it free for as long as we can, which, which I'm sure will be free. And that's just so that more as many people as possible can be a part of it. All right, cool stuff, mate. All right, and where can they find you on Google Plus and Twitter and stuff? Uh, if you go to uh, Google Plus, if you uh, look for Cam Meadows, C A M Meadows, yep, yep. Uh, you can circle me, uh, and you could always send me a message there. Cool. All right. Any questions before he goes, uh, guys? Any questions to Cam? I see you've got a um, section there for adding a schedule for upcoming shows. Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything much there at the moment, but uh, in the future, yeah, we have we have a lot of start. schedules. Uh, we're still working on, working on the team who's updating the calendar, but there's, we use Google calendars, and uh, you can view and different people are going to get up uh, ability to add themselves to different events when there's openings. So that will be updated really soon. Cool. Will it be an ability to subscribe to get an email for upcoming events? Yes, you will be able to subscribe to the Google Calendar. Cool. That sounds great. We are, we're trying to use uh, the Google products as much as possible uh, because we are actually working uh, with Google on this project. Uh, they're 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 working hand in hand with me actually on it and giving me little advice as much as they're allowed to. You know, they're not allowed to say too much, but uh, they they've worked with me since the first day we put the site online, and uh, we have their blessing and their support. Fantastic, great stuff, mate. All right, so any last words before you go, um, Jason or Aaron to Cam? Please probably, me. That's it, Aaron. Just- just good luck. Yeah, good luck. I think yeah. it's a, such an excellent idea, and I think it's gonna. Um, there's there's awesome opportunities to to you know to get from it. Um, I, I think this is amazing. Good on you. Yeah, I agree. Good on you, Cam. Thanks for being on, mate, and um, thanks for take, taking the time to being on. Of course, thank you, guys. And uh, yeah, that's Cam from uh, HangoutParties dot com. Cool. Cool. Good thank stuff. You. Bye. Thanks, mate. Thank you. All right, let's move on to the next topic. Marco Patrol uh, is in better.com. Uh, I was on the Chatterbox Live the other day with him. And yeah, uh, that was great, mate. Great, yep. great show. Great show. And uh, he actually did a shout out to us. Um, Jason, oh. I hope you don't mind me playing this video, but um, no, that's fine. it goes for a couple of minutes. But uh, this is what he said about uh, tech webcasts and Chatterbox Live. Good evening. I'm Peter Mays over from micropatrol.com. Just wanted to thank a few people today for having me on their respective podcasts. Uh, actually, Stephen from Chatterbox Live had me on Justin.TV today, and we were talking all about broadcasting, and here's a look at that conversation. Yeah, I want to get a chance everybody to see what the, uh, your show looks like a little bit. And uh, wow. 
I'm embarrassed. That's the stuff I did like six months ago before I. Oh, was it? I got oh, okay. Maybe I should have <laughs> called you and uh, asked first. Yeah, I didn't realize. Uh, now, I think on your website you also mentioned going back to the, some of the gear you use. Um, it says here, I think, uh, Canon Vixia. I, I guess it's a camcorder. I don't know if you're going to integrate it into the show or not. Or well, you know, in so so basically that was the uh, conversation we had going back and forth. That's Stephen from. Chatterbox Live, which is an excellent, excellent podcast, which is broadcast live on Justin.tv. You can check them out on Blip.tv as well as YouTube. We'll have links in the show notes. And uh, another gentleman that we had on there with us is Brad from the Tech Webcast. You can find that on their website, techwebcast.info. And uh, Brad is actually from Australia. He's got a, a great, great podcast network that he's got started there. Um, the cool thing is he's got a widget on there. Uh, from Podomatic, so you can actually listen to his podcast uh, right from the show. Be sure to add both of these guys on iTunes, where their podcasts are available for download. So, uh, just want to give a uh, a big thank you to both Stephen and Brad for having me on Chatterbox Live. Looking very forward on August twenty sixth. It's going to be at ten p.m. Central Time. Ten p.m. Central Time on the Tech Webcast. Techwebcast dot info with Brad. Very excited to be on their show. We're going to have both of these guys on micropatrol.com coming to you very soon. Please don't forget, check out our website. It's www.micropatrol.com. It's real easy to remember. And the reason you need to check it out is because that is where I put all of the most recent content. It's where you're going to find episodes. You're going to find interviews. You're going to find articles, product reviews, and, and everything that you're looking for, as well as our sponsors, information on how to contact us, all that and more is online at micropatrol.com. Go to the top, click contact us. It's going to give you email address, phone number, all of the above. Give us a call, 615-544-5054. We'd love to take your voicemail, put them on the air, or send us an email or a V-mail. Micropatrol at gmail.com. We're looking forward to you. And if you're not following us on Twitter now, I don't know what your excuse is. It's at Micropatrol. We're also on Facebook. And as soon as we can get 25 more people, just search Micropatrol with a space on Facebook for our Micropatrol page. Once we've had 25 people added to that, we will have Facebook.com slash Micropatrol. Not quite yet, but we're getting there. So add us, like us, get on Facebook. Steven, Brad. Thanks for talking to me earlier tonight, Brad. Looking very forward to being on the techwebcast.info, uh, your podcast, which uh, is, of course, available from iTunes. Thank you, guys. Uh, look forward to having you here on uh, Micro Patrol and uh, kind of turning it around and uh, letting me ask you the questions about how you guys got interested in podcasting and uh, just, uh, just how crazy it is. Just in uh, episode 108. Uh, one of the stories uh, we talked about was a Samsung Galaxy tablet, which was delayed release in Australia uh, due to a copy uh, patent battle uh, with Apple. And if you'll remember, during that video, I was kind of laughing, saying, you know, I don't really know why I'm telling you guys a story about Australia. There's nobody in the United States that probably, frankly, cares that a tablet's going to be delayed release in Australia. And uh, surely enough, I got an email uh, from Brad from Tech Webcast, who's actually in Australia. And, um, it, you know, that just kind of brought this full circle, the power of everything we're doing here. So uh, this whole net casting, live casting, podcasting, stream casting, whatever you want to call it, it's awesome stuff. And you're going to find more of it here on micropatrol.com. And don't forget to check out Chatterbox Live and the Tech Webcast. Yes, indeed. That was a great Micro plug Patrol. for Tech Webcast. Don't you agree, guys? Awesome. It's very awesome. This guy is going to do take off, and uh, the way I found him was he did a response to the tech buzz, and oh, okay. uh, and uh, yeah, no, it's really good. Good to get out there and get the word out there for different um, podcasts and websites and stuff. This guy's actually new; um, he's just starting out, and um, he needs some uh, promotion and stuff. We'll help them, and they'll help us. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, sweet. And um, have you guys seen the website? What are your thoughts on the website? I haven't seen the website. I watched that video the other day, though. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I saw his website. It looks like he's um, like he's he's doing a lot of content, like not just weekly, but like all the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's doing like the live stream and stuff and that sort of thing. And, um, it's gonna yeah, be yeah. another Dylan Combs. <laughs> yeah, maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, nah, me and Jason are going to be on that show in, in a couple, few weeks. You're going to interview us and can't wait. It's going awesome. to be fun. All cool. right, let's move on to the next topic. What's the next topic, Jason? Got some new stuff. All right. What's been happening, man? Skype for the iPads finally been released and then it would disappeared cool. and then it came back yep. again. Good stuff. Skype for iPad features everything you'll find in the iPhone app, including messaging and voice calls, as well as video chat, but takes advantage of the superior hardware of the iPad 2. It's finally here. Skype for iPad has finally been released in the Apple App Store. After months of waiting, app- iPad users can finally ditch the iPhone app and download this optimized build that takes full advantage of the extra screen real estate provided on the iPad. Skype for iPad features everything you'll find in the iPhone app, including messaging and voice calls, as well as video chat, but takes advantage of the superior hardware of the iPad 2 to deliver full-screen video chats using both front and back video cameras. In operation, the video chat capabilities are largely differentiate the iPad app from the iPhone version, which until today was the only way iPad users could use Skype. It looks and works in a similar fashion to Apple's own FaceTime app, with the added benefits of working over a 3G connection and giving iPad owners access to full-screen video with other Skype users. Other iPad optimizations include the ability to send instant messages while chatting over video, a new grid-like view of the user's contacts, including large avatars and easier navigation, with the ability to locate recent conversations and your Skype history at the touch of a button. It's also easier to send SMS messages simply by opening a contact and choosing Send SMS. Skype for the iPad is available now as a free download. Two-way video functionality requires an iPad 2. Skype is also available for Windows, Mac, Linux, iPhone, Android, and Windows Phone. Google is a latecomer to social networking, but its new site is growing much faster than MySpace, Facebook, or Twitter did in their early days, according to technology experts. However, it still remains to be seen whether Google Plus can pose a serious threat to Facebook, which has more than 750 million members. Andrew Lipsman, a vice president for industry analysis at tracking firm Comscore, said Google Plus, which was launched on June 28, had 25 million unique visitors as of July 24th. During a panel discussion hosted by Wedbush Securities, Mr. Lipsman said it took other social networks much longer to reach 25 million users, 22 months for MySpace, 33 months for Twitter, and 37 months for Facebook. Obviously, this is very strong growth trajectory, he said. He cautioned, however, that Google has a really large user base that it can build off of with its 1 billion users worldwide. And it still has a really long way to go to be competitive with Facebook, he said. Google Plus is the fastest by a long shot, but it's more important to realize that the fastest may not always be the best. Sometimes that slow build can lead to a long network effect that pays long-term dividends. Most Google Plus users, 6.4 million, are in the US, followed by India with 3.6 million, Canada with 1.1 million, Britain with 1.1 million, and Germany with over 920,000, according to Comscore. Mr. Lipsman said many plus users appeared to also be users of Gmail and display a very long, very strong early adapter profile. He said the ratio of men to women was about 2 to 1, and that 60% of users were between the ages of 18 and 34. In the U.S., the highest numbers of Google Plus users are in the tech-savvy cities of San Francisco and Austin. Steve Rubel, executive president for Global Strategy and Insights at public relations firm Edelman, said Facebook was not vulnerable immediately to Google. I don't see Google Plus taking significant share from Facebook in the next 18 months, he said. At the same time, what we have seen is that over the years, there have never been a social network or community that has had significant staying power, he said. There's always a shuffling every two or three years, a changing of the guard. We saw it with MySpace, he said, of the one-time social network leader that has been losing users ever since it was eclipsed by Facebook. Mr. Rubel said Google was compelled to try its hand at social networking because Facebook was restricting the access of its search engine to Facebook content. What's happening is more content is being created behind Facebook walls than ever before, and all of that content is invisible to Google, he said. Conceptually, at least, they're building a kind of alternate web. There's also an entire web that is app-based on mobile phones, and that's invisible to them. Mr. Rubel said it was conceivable that more content would be invisible to Google in five or ten years than what the search engine can see today. So they had to make a play to get more people to create content on their site, he said. It's to get more people to spend more time on Google. In Unveiling Plus, Google stressed its ability to let users separate online friends and family into different circles or networks and share information only with members of a particular circle. One of the criticisms of Facebook is that updates are shared with all of one's friends unless a user has gone through a relatively complicated process to create separate Facebook groups. 
Randy Zuckerberg, the sister of Facebook co-founder Mark Zuckerberg and director of marketing for the social network, is leaving to start her own company, Facebook said. We can confirm Randy has decided to leave Facebook to start her own company, a Facebook spokesman said. We are grateful for her important service. Technology blog All Things Digital said Zuckerberg was leaving to start a new media firm to help companies become more social called R to Z Media. In her resignation letter obtained by All Things Digital, she said she has spent the last past six years at Facebook innovating and pushing the media industry forward by introducing new concepts. We have made incredible progress, but there's still much to be done and other ways I can affect change, she said. Now is the perfect time for me to move outside of Facebook to build a company focused on the exciting trends underway in the media industry. Zuckerberg said that Facebook would clearly be a central element in all of my projects and that she would continue to be a strong vocal evangelist for the most incredible social platform ever created. Facebook was founded in 2004 by Mark Zuckerberg while he was a student at Harvard University. Membership of the social network recently topped 750 million. If you thought that unlocking cars via SMS was the definition of nefarious, think again. At the Black Hat Security Conference, security researcher Jerome Radcliffe has detailed how our use of SCADA insulin pumps, pacemakers and implanted defibrillators could lead to untraceable lethal attacks from half a mile away. Radcliffe, who was a diabetic with a wireless, always attached insulin pump, was slightly worried that someone might be able to hack his pump, meddle with its settings and kill him. And so, in true hacker fashion, he has spent the last two years trying to hack it himself. Unfortunately, he was very successful. He managed to intercept the wireless control signals, reverse them, inject some fake data and then send it back to the pump. He could increase the amount of insulin injected by the pump or reduce it. In both cases, the pump showed no signs of being tampered with and it did not generate a warning that he was probably about to die. I can get full remote control, Radcliffe said. If I were an evil hacker, I could issue commands to give insulin without anyone's authority. This is scary and I can manipulate the data so it happens in a stealth way. A new software update for Apple's Apple TV streaming box has added a feature that makes up for its lack of built-in storage by making purchase video content available whenever viewers want to watch it. The company's $99 box can now stream purchase TV shows on demand directly from Apple servers and also lets users buy contents directly from the box. The move to serve up purchase videos is no minor addition. One of Apple TV's biggest losses is the move to a rental-only model, besides no longer storing content locally, was that you ended up with a more limited selection of video content since only a handful of TV networks were offering rentals. One workaround was to use another device with that purchase content stored on it, be it a computer or iOS device like iPhone or iPad. Now Apple's taken on that responsibility by storing the content on its own servers, making it available whenever it's needed. Adding on-demand streaming for video also suggests that a feature is on its way to other devices and software, including iTunes itself, which is expected to receive its annual update next month. When debuting iCloud back in June, notably missing was a video component, though this update would suggest it's to be added. Although the TV show tweaks, today's latest, along with the TV show tweaks, today's update brings web videos from Vimeo, which joins Google's YouTube and Yahoo's Flickr as popular web properties and app form. In CNET's hands on with the update, John Falcone noticed that a streaming standard of definition, that a streaming standard definition version of a TV show directly from Apple required waiting for the box to buffer for a full six minutes on a speedy network through a controlled 802.11n network. During this time, users can go about using other Apple TV features. The official version change number in the update goes from 4.2.2 to 4.3. Apple is planning to bring the box up to a full new version with iOS 5, which will bring the streaming of iOS applications to the Apple TV using Apple's AirPlay technology. During the last fiscal quarter of earnings call, Apple Chief Operating Officer Tim Cook once again referred to the Apple TV as a hobby device and noted the company doesn't position it with the same profile as some of its other devices since it's not another leg of the stool. And Sony is adjusting its PlayStation Vita launch plans and rolling back to an earlier claim that the new portable system would be out in at least one territory by the end of 2011. According to an AP report, Japan has been selected as 2011 sole recipient of the Vita. Speaking to the press in Tokyo, SEI chairman Kaz Hirai has clarified that the PlayStation Vita would miss the holidays in America and Europe and instead rolling out to those regions during early 2012. Previously, Sony said it would be available in the global market starting at the end of 2011. 
Hire insisted that the launch would not be accompanied by a lowered price, despite Nintendo's hasty and reactionary price drop on the Nintendo 3DS. We packed so much into the device and made it very affordable, Hare said. There's no need to lower the price just because somebody else that happens to be in the video games business decided they were going to lower their price. The PlayStation Vita will start at $249 alongside a 3G-enabled version for $299. And that's the news for Tech Webcast today. Good news, mate. Good news. Yeah. Uh, do you still use your Xbox much? Not very much at all. <laughs> no, same. same Last know. week I um, <laughs> did some exercises with the Your Shape Fitness Evolve from Ubisoft, but um, other than that, I haven't had it turned on at all. No. In fact, when I turned it on, I had to wait uh, half an hour or so for it to apply an update that I think came out about two weeks ago. Oh, shit. I just haven't had it on. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, same. I haven't really been getting, getting into many, many games. I've been using Steam on the computer here. But, um, yeah, you having fun with that? Yeah, yeah. I think I'm... Enjoy. What games do you like on Steam? Oh, I've been playing uh, Call of Duty, Black Ops, uh, you know, them sort of games. Um, yep. Did you try the uh, Indie Bundle? No, I haven't tried that one yet, no. Okay, Indie Bundle 3 has now got Indie Bundle 2 games for free with it, plus um, free playing of Minecraft until August the 14th and some other bonuses thrown in there as well. Okay, cool. Good so stuff. I think they've effectively doubled the number of games and added in a lot of other features as well due to putting the bundle two in with the new bundle three so you have to purchase i think pay at least over ten dollars to buy the bundle because oh, okay. uh, as usual you can pick whatever price you want but if you pay over ten dollars you get indie two bundle plus minecraft plus a bunch of other things thrown in as well oh nice all That'd right let's, yeah yeah that sounds pretty, sounds pretty good um let's talk about uh an ipad app called odds tv now jason you've been using that what are your yeah i just started using it this week i wanted to look up something on uh, what time it was going to be on the television and what it was going to be about. So yep. I fired up the app for the first time this week and the last two or three nights I've been reading through there, finding out what shows are coming up and uh, setting up on TiVo a season pass so that I could watch them. <laughs> cool, yeah, yeah. What are, you, um, what are your favourite features on the, on the app, about the app? I think it's just so easy to use. It's very clean, uh, clear interface. You can see everything you want at once. Definitely. Uh, you can flip it around. Uh, it automatically rotates from portrait to landscape. Yep. And you can read details about information about the show, what's coming up. Mm. And um, rather than just the show name, you can actually click on it and then see what the show is going to be about, a bit of extra information there. Definitely, definitely. I, I like the movie category. Do you look at all, all the movies that, that's coming up on the different channels. Yeah, I think they should um, somehow check, read the, go to the um, TiVo Genie website, read some of the code there and figure out how to put that into it so you could click on it and then uh, click uh, Season Pass or something and you could record it on your TiVo. I'm sure it could be Yeah, possible, that, that but, was uh, not a bad idea, actually. That, that could work, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it would probably take a lot of work from them, but it would yeah. be really neat if they could do that. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. And also that, that TiVo update, mate, that was a big, uh, big disappointment, wasn't it? Yeah, they said they're just moving their content for, to get new providers to provide the content to the old one. So um, same content, nothing's changed. No. Just you've got a bunch of outages while they, I guess, save some money by finding somebody else to supply their feeds. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Anyway, um, uh, Aaron, any, any any last words before we go, mate? Anything you want to add anything before we go? Actually, there's something I thought would be pretty interesting is that um, yeah, everyone's been talking about um, how Vodafone are just horrible this year. And um, just this week, the Sydney Morning Herald... Um, released the numbers on the amount of customers they've lost this year. And uh, it turns out it was 375,000 customers wow. that they've lost. Gee, that's a lot. One of my yeah. friends did. She's gone over to Telstra now. Couldn't be happier. Yeah. So many people are saying the same thing. Yeah. It's, it's, and, and, the, and the financial losses, like um, the, the parent company, um, yeah, VHA, um, they, they did a, a $96 million downturn and that turned out to be like a $78 million loss for the company. So they're not even making any profit anymore. They're just bleeding, hemorrhaging cash and customers. They've got to do something. They've got to do something. Yeah, yeah. Do yeah. And, and they are doing something, but they can't make it happen soon enough. Um, they're, no, they're replacing probably. all of their 3G towers, but it'll take until the end of next year to be finished with that. They'll, they'll be toast by then. Everybody so. will be gone before that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you I can, thought... You could be the only company in Australia that gave, like, unlimited data for $10 a month or something and people would still go. Yeah, well, yeah, I know. And when 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 the news came out that they were losing all these customers, like, I thought they lost about 50,000 customers, which would just be ridiculous. But 375,000 customers in Australia. That's, 
That's crazy. Yeah. So I thought you'd find that interesting. Mm. Now, um, Jason, have you, have you been using the, the Skype? Have you tried out the new Skype on the iPad? Or I've it? installed it. I haven't used it yet. I was actually oh, going to use it later today. <laughs> yeah, the video quality, mate, it's pretty good. Pretty really good. good. Yeah, it's good. Great video quality. Good to have a native version of oh, it. Oh yeah, for definitely. Just do a universal. It works on both, but you know. Definitely for sure. And before we go, any update on the new app for the tech webcast or? Um, <clears throat> Ansco released their new stable version of the Corona, so I'll try doing some builds over this weekend and see if that uh, how that goes. Sweet. And uh, also, there's going to be a video version this week as well, or of this show. Yep, definitely. Cool, definitely. Good. Okay, yeah, Glenn was actually asking me about it the other day, and. Uh, I've got a new lower third to put on it as well. Oh, cool. Can't wait to see that. That's yeah. going to be good. That's all we've we've got can, um, with uh, iMovie, is it? Or? Yep. Oh, cool. I thought there must be some way to do it, so I Googled up, found out how to do it, did some testing. Oh, good. Good on you. That's very cool. All right. Well, this has been episode 146. Thanks, guys, for being on. Next week's going to be another good show. Again, uh, leave some comments on iTunes and Twitter and stuff, what you want to hear. And, yep, uh, you can find me at um, bluebilby.com yep. and on Twitter, warlock, W-A-U-L-O-K, and bluebilby apps. Okay, and you can find me on Twitter, uh, Brad Oz, Tech Webcast, Tech Luster, uh, and Aaron, where can they find you, mate? Oz Tech News, OZ Tech News on Twitter and oztechnews.com. Good stuff, and there was some uh, argument going on the other day on your website about that, um, about Gregory Evans guy. I've just seen that. Yeah, you sent me a text message. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it turns out there's a lot of people that don't like him, you know, um, yeah, last week's guests. Um, he he. Um, yeah, he, he gets a lot of people angry. Um, it, it was interesting to see. I had no idea. Um, and I was just sort of watching it all unfold. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I I couldn't get into it now without us going over time. But no, um, you're, right, you're right, you're right. Yeah, but um, look, yeah, anyone who's listening to the show want to yeah um follow that up further. Um, check the website and have a read about it. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's it's been pretty interesting. There's quite a massive rivalry between Gregory Evans and uh, Kevin Meeknick. Yeah, we should try and try and get that guy on the show. One of yeah. my friends at work listened to the um, episode of Tech Webcast from last week and he said it's one of the best ones we've had. He yeah. really enjoyed it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And also we're going to have uh, Adam Turner on too. Come and talk to him too. Yep, that'll be great. He's a well-known name in technology news. Australia, yep. Yep, Australia. All right, thanks guys for being on. See ya. Hello, Hello. Hey. Glenn from Aussie Tech Heads. Join Will, Eric and myself as we bring you the latest, most up-to-date, important tech news that affects you from Australia and the world. A weekly podcast available each Friday through iTunes. Watch the live stream recording of the show at live.thesecrethub.com each Thursday night, 7.30pm or GMT plus 10. Call in live via Skype or chat in our lounge. However you get us, just make sure you do. Listen or visit our website for more information, www.aussietechheads.com.au. Aussie Tech Heads, Australia's longest-running tech Tech News Podcast. This is Tech Webcast. Computers. Technology. Gadgets. And other geeky stuff. It's on iTunes. It's awesome. And it's from the future. Follow us at twitter.com slash techwebcast. And on Facebook. And check techwebcast.info. For info, Tech Webcast. Turn on, tune in, drop on. <laughs>